Hello and welcome to today's webinar, How to Sell Your Data Backup Services. My name is Jeff Dale and I'm the Marketing Manager here at Intronis. I'll be moderating today's session. I'm pleased to be joined by Raj Kara, published IT marketing author and CEO of Mailer Mailer, the makers of the IT marketing tool known as Prestacular. Before we get started, let's do some brief housekeeping. During the webinar, if you have any questions, feel free to share them using the questions or chat panels on the right side of your GoToWebinar screen. If we ask any poll questions, which I suspect we might during today's session, you can use the GoToWebinar panels to respond to those as well. At the end of the webinar, you'll be prompted to complete a survey. Please take a moment to tell us what you think so that we can continually improve the content and quality of online events like these. Now before I hand it over to Raj, I'd like to say a few brief words about Intronus as we are proud to be hosting and sponsoring today's webinar. Intronus developed the IT channel's first complete data protection platform built exclusively for IT service providers like you. With the Intronus Echo platform, you can back up and recover everything from simple files and folders to virtual machines, physical servers, laptops, and desktops, all within one tool. Plus, Intronus partners can easily integrate their backup solution with Autotask, streamlining your backup business. Best of all, the Intronus U2 plan offers unlimited local and cloud storage for a simple flat rate per client. That means you pay the exact same cost for each business you protect, and your cost remains the same no matter how much of your client's storage needs are growing over time. This fixed price model leads to a predictable and highly profitable margin for your backup and recovery business. If you'd like to learn more about the Intronus Unlimited Storage Plans and see how much more profitable you could be with the Intronus Echo platform, please visit the link on your screen to register for a quote. Visit intronus.com slash no limits today. I would also like to take a moment and speak about Autotask as they have joined us in sponsoring today's webinar. Autotask's integrated IT business management platform helps to automate and optimize the entire client lifecycle while helping generate revenue from what they like to call the four critical stages up to securing your client for life. Autotask will help you from securing new clients to managing their projects on time and on budget, and Autotask will take you through setting up a managed services contract to finally setting you up as a trusted advisor or IT department to help secure those customers for life. I'd also like to mention that there's a special offer Autotask has given us for today. There are offers for new and existing customers who are on today's webinar. They range from 10% off Autotask Premium all the way up to 25% off of advanced dashboards. For more information, email sales at autotask.com or call 518-720-3500 and hit extension 1. Now be sure to mention the Intronus webinar special to take advantage of these special offers. Now I'd like to hand it over to Raj for a valuable lesson on selling data backup. Take it away, Raj. Welcome, everybody. Uh, just a little background about me before we dive into specifics on how you can generate business uh, for data backup services. Um, I'm actually an engineer. Uh, I've got a couple of engineering degrees in electronics and engineering. I used to build semiconductor chips, actually, a long time ago. I was an engineer for about nine years, and then I got the itch to start my own company. That was 20 years ago, uh, and I've picked up a few things along the way. A lot of them are in my book, The IT Marketing Crash Course, uh, and uh, some, some other material that we publish on our blog and our videos. So uh, if you'd like some additional information, just feel free to hop over uh, to our uh, YouTube channel. Just search YouTube Prestacular, and there'll be a lot of material there. So Jeff, let's get started with a quick poll. Sure. Thanks, Raj. And it is time for our first audience poll. Uh, the question is, do you have a marketing plan in place to get more data backup business? And the answer choices are yes, and it's already in motion, yes, but we're struggling to implement, or no, we don't have one. So folks, I'm going to go ahead and hit a button that will push this up to your screen. You should see that now, and you should be able to go ahead and submit your responses. 
And Jeff, this is a pretty important thing because a lot of times the way most companies get business, small IT companies get business, is is that uh, business sort of just shows up, you know, through word of mouth, referrals, uh, clients tell other clients about it, and uh, and then you get business. Uh, but to really get more traction, um, you should have more of a formal document in place. So. I uh, just wanted to get a, the pulse of everybody attending today. We have lots of people uh, on the webinar. We had over 400 people register for this one. So I wanted to get a check uh, to see who's, uh, who's actually got an actual plan in place. You know, it's, a, it's a very interesting question, Raj, and it's a good point that you make because I, you know, we actually had a conversation internally recently about uh, you know, some MSB marketing habits. And it does seem that in a lot of cases, folks get a lot of referral-based business initially, and that helps them grow. Um, but at some point they plateau with that and they do need to, to step it up to a, a real marketing plan and to take it to the next level. So uh, it be interesting to see what the audience says today. And uh, it looks like most of you have already submitted your response. So I'll go ahead and close this poll and we'll see uh, how things stack up. Yeah, Jeff, why don't you go over the responses? Okay, so it looks like... 28% have a marketing plan uh, for a data backup business, and it's already in motion. That's great to see. 20% uh, have one, but they're struggling to implement that. And more than half of you do not have a marketing plan in place. Um, so, Raj, what do you think of those results? Well, it's not surprising, actually, because I know most people, uh, as they do market their business, uh, don't have a formal marketing plan in place. But the reason we actually uh, asked this question, one, not only to get uh, some input on, on what the, the audience um, is doing, but also to let you know about a bonus for attending today, which is free. Uh, this is a 12, uh, 2015 data backup marketing plan template uh, that Perstacular created. We, we created this for uh, all of our clients to use. Uh, it's a checklist. Now, I've written a lot of uh, backup plans before, uh, sorry, uh, marketing plans before, and uh, and I found that every time I wrote a marketing plan that was a lot of words, it never got used. It just kind of sat on the shelf until the next year when we felt like, oh, we've got to write up another plan. So in this plan, it's, it's quite different. It's a month-by-month -month checklist, so if you just kind of go through the different things that are in the checklist uh, related to acquiring more customers by the... Well, within a, just literally a couple months, you start seeing some traction, and by the end of 12 months, you'll definitely have a solid program with a rhythm in your business to get that uh, uh, marketing momentum built up. So this will be provided as a bonus, um, and uh, we'll email that to you uh, afterwards, uh, after the webinar. By the way, we are recording the webinar, so if you're watching this uh, presentation after the, uh, the, the taping date, uh, just feel free to reach out to Intronis or to myself uh, at Prestacular, uh, uh, which is our Twitter handle, anywhere, uh, and, and then Tronus for your uh, your Twitter handle to get a copy of this plan. So let's go into the different uh, the the uh, details on getting your uh, getting your marketing plan in place. There's a lot of different pieces to the puzzle. So one of the questions I often get asked is, how do I find new clients? And you're probably thinking that right now. How do I find new prospects for my data backup services? Well, today I'm going to show you the answers to this puzzle. And it turns out finding prospects is actually the easy part. It's, it's, it really is. I'm going to show you how in just a moment. The two places that you can find prospects, online and offline. So we're going to go into offline first, and then we'll tie it into online and how you can create a killer process to generate a lot of data backup business pretty quickly. So to answer this question, where do you get new clients? You have to look at another question first. You see, you can't find something if you don't know what you're looking for. So the first question that you really need to ask yourself is, what kind of person buys data backup services? Now notice I said person, not company. Because at the end of the day, the decision to buy data backup services is made by a person. And if that person doesn't have a clear understanding of the risks of not doing backup, or if they don't understand the different types of backup or the security options, they won't buy the right solution if they buy anything at all. So to figure out the answer to this question, take a look at your current client base. Start by doing this really simple exercise. Profile your clients. This is only going to take about 10 minutes, probably even less. Make a note to yourself to do it right after this webinar, perhaps sometime this week.
What kind of things do your clients have in common? So here's some questions to ask as you build this client profile. What's the average size of the company? Now I'm just putting some, some placeholder uh, information here, like uh, maybe your average size of the average client is 15 employees. But just come up with that for your own client base. Think about who in your client base buys data backup services right now and, and what they look like. How many PCs do they have? How many servers do they have? What kind of industry are they in? Sometimes MSPs start to target very focused niche markets. So if you go after accountants, just you know, make a note of that because this will be very important uh, later on. This 10-minute this exercise, I can't tell you how valuable this is. Also, take a look at what kind of risks that they are aware of. If you spot patterns, this will really help in your, uh, your marketing analysis. Are they afraid of losing daily work uh, files or private client records? Maybe they need to be compliant with some regulations uh, surrounding health care laws and so on. Uh, everybody might have a little bit of a different issue and therefore need a different solution. So just be aware of what kind of things uh, that, uh, that they're, they're concerned about. And the reason that's important is because if you know what your clients look like, you're going to know what to look for in a prospect. And it means that you're going to save a lot of time and effort avoiding leads that aren't realistic prospects for you. Now, there's only one you, there's 24 hours in a day, and there's a lot of tasks on your plate. So to really build your business, you need to focus on the things that are the most effective use of your time. This little 10-minute planning exercise that we just talked about will save you countless hours going forward. It's a way to buy your time back. So now that you know your ideal client profile, let's dig into to really leverage this information. What doing this exercise means is that if you know what your clients look like, then you can find out where they hang out, what events they go to, what they read. And when you know all that information, you know exactly where to find new prospects. So to make your, uh, building your client profile even easier, here's what you can do. Just call your top five clients. Find out which networking events that they've signed up for next month. So we're recording uh, uh, this webinar right now at the beginning of January, or beginning of February, beginning of 2015. So put on your calendar different types of meetings you can go to between now and the start of the summertime. Chamber of Commerce events. Maybe there's a retail association that your clients are part of. Go there. Ask them what events they never miss, and then go try to attend those. Law firm meetings, accounting company events, uh, medical society events. So once you've put these events on your calendar and start attending them, you are going to be in front of many other prospects because that's where your clients are hanging out. Prospects are going to be very much the same way. So what's even better than just attending these events is actually giving presentations. And I'll show you how to do that painlessly in just a bit. So I've gone into the online ways to find prospects. Now we're going to explore the uh, sorry the offline ways. We're going to explore the online ways in just a few minutes. Uh, now that you know where to go to find prospects, the real question becomes how do you get those people that you meet interested in you and your services? So to figure out how to convince someone to buy your services, let's take a closer look at how you buy services for your business. You probably don't have an accountant or lawyer as full-time staff. Most small companies don't. You made the business decision that it's cheaper to outsource those services than to bring them in-house. Well, that's the exact same reason someone would hire you, right? It's cheaper than hiring someone to do all of that technology work in-house. So when you buy legal or accounting services, are you most impressed and comfortable with people who rattle off industry jargon, something that's in their own technical terms? Or do you tend to lean toward those who can explain their world to you in plain English? Let me translate this into your business. Here are some examples of things a client might want backed up. Tax returns, contracts, medical records, payroll, staff files, private client data. They understand this terminology. So if you pitched them your services and you used your terminology, 
cloud-based data backup, automated backup, easy data recovery, secure file transfer, remote data access. What do they hear? There's no common language. On the other hand, if you communicated with them a little bit differently, they'll instantly get it. So the common language are things like power outage, employee theft, earthquake, burglary, hard dive, drive crash, hurricane, big snowstorm, uh, or the one I love the most, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. They understand these terms. When you look at the common language that you have with your clients, you can see what they're really buying and what you're really selling. Now, these words and thoughts are ideal when you target smaller companies, um, but what happens when you target larger companies? Maybe some companies have an IT director that you're dealing with or a CIO. Well, the same concept here really applies. Talk in their language. The difference being that when you're talking and selling to technical people, their language can be a bit more technical. You can say private cloud, elastic cloud, differential backups, remote restoration cloud security. They're, they're going to understand that a lot more. So that's the big thing that you need to remember is look at what terms they understand and then communicate that way. So instead of all of those terms, uh, sorry, uh, instead of um, uh, what when you explore what they're really buying and what you're really selling, well all of these terms kind of have meaning. At the end of the day, they're all buying one thing. You're selling an insurance policy. You're selling protection. What you're really selling is peace of mind. So Jeff, let's take a moment and do another quick poll about what people do when they meet a prospect. What do they leave behind with them? Sure, let's do that, Raj. Uh, so the question, as you all see on the screen, is when you meet with a prospect, what materials do you leave them with? And answer choices are a proposal, a white paper, or other educational material, a business card or contact info, or a brochure. So I'll go ahead and launch it, and you can go ahead and submit your responses using the GoToWebinar interface. You should see that right on your screen. I see responses coming in already. Uh, and I will, I, I will add here that you know, a while back I was in a sales role, uh, outside sales, and I will say, admittedly, that there were many times when I went over and I, I met with somebody and I left them a business card and contact info. And thinking back on that, I imagine there was, and looking at these answer choices, I imagine there was something of uh, greater value that I might have been able to leave. Uh, so Raj, I'm curious what advice you have there. But, but I, I think leaving a business card was just sort of the thing to do. It just felt normal and OK, and so I did so. Yeah, and, and I mean, that's probably the, the, the least amount of things that you should leave behind. So at least you did that, Jeff, so kudos for you on that one. Um, but, uh, but there are a lot of other things that people can, can certainly leave behind. And so some of the things that we put up on the board here today uh, are just some of the examples. Um, but uh, let's take a look and see what, what uh, the poll says. Do we have the results? We sure do. Yep, most have voted. So I'll go ahead and close this poll, and we will share the results. So we've got 21% leaving a proposal, 31% leaving a white paper or other educational material, 73% uh, leave a business card or contact info, so I'm glad I wasn't alone, um, and then 39% with a brochure. So um, folks have the option of, of answering, um, you know, choosing multiple choices here, mm -hmm. so it uh, looks like most are leaving at least a business card. But go on, okay, sure. yeah, that's good. So um, now let's think about when you get pitched. If someone came to your office trying to sell their services and if they left behind a business card, uh, that's good. If you were interested to follow up, uh, you would contact them. But we all get distracted. I mean, literally, when you left the door, they had a million fires to fight for the rest of the day uh, that they had going on. And so uh, the chances of them following up with you uh, start to diminish with the hours that uh, go on after you've left the building. And so the other things that you can leave behind them will, will give them some more material to, uh, to, to chew on. So let's take a look at brochure for a second. If you left behind a brochure, what do you usually do with a brochure, Jeff? If someone leaves behind something for you, where do you usually put the brochure? Okay, I'll tell the truth. Uh, be honest. I, be honest. I, 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 have, 
you know, I always have good intentions, but then business happens and life happens and children happen and next thing you know, that brochure is sitting there in a pile that doesn't get read, unfortunately. I mean, there's a rare occasion I flip through it, but I usually don't get to it until it's a little bit stale um, for spring cleaning time or I pass it to someone else, a colleague that, that might be interested, but I have to imagine that it sits on their desk for a while too collecting dust. Yeah, and well, let's, let's be brutally honest. I think a lot of brochures, unfortunately, end up in the trash can. Uh, as part of the spring cleaning cycle, and so they don't always get read. So you've got you've got a situation where if you just left behind the business cards or brochure, uh, the chances of the follow up isn't as much. Now a proposal that changes the game quite a bit because now you're leaving behind something that's very valuable uh, that people can look through. And of course, what do they do? They never read any part of the proposal. They always flip back to the end and say, "What is it going to cost me?" Everybody does this. We all know everybody does it. We do it, right? So, uh, so that's another thing that you kind of got to watch for. But answer B, a white paper or edu other educational material. And I was really happy to see that 30 some percent uh, of the audience actually leaves behind that kind of material. That is so valuable because what that does is it, one, positions you as an expert resource, and two, if someone wanted to share some material, that's what they want to share. I mean, they'll share the cost of your proposal and stuff, sure, uh, but that's really what they want to share. So uh, let's take a look at what influences buying decisions so that you can figure out when you get in front of prospects, how do you stay in touch with them, how do you stay connected, you know, when you meet them at these other meetings. They'll we'll also talk about how to get people uh, connected through, through uh, online uh, means too. So let me uh, get the control back here for the webinar and we'll flip to the next slide. Okay, so you've probably heard this before. People make buying decisions from their emotions. Uh, the example I like to use is to just have you think of the last time you bought a car. Did you pick up that brochure and say to yourself, wow, this brochure is so amazing. It's got really nice, pretty pictures. I like the fonts. Oh, it's pretty fantastic. I've got to buy this car. Nobody thinks that way. Cars are emotional decisions. Other large purchases, still emotional decisions. I will say to you, almost all the IT services are based on emotional decisions. And the, the decision to buy may, may be a reflection of how well the sales rep handled the, themselves when they were talking to the prospect because you want to get that comfortable feeling with them, right? That's an emotional decision. So a prospect for IT services also needs to feel comfortable with you before they sign on the dotted line. So peace of mind, which is what you're selling, is an emotion. So how do you sell this intangible thing called peace of mind? Well, you build trust. How do you build trust? The way you build trust, especially to people that you don't know, is that you prove that you're an expert. Now, proving you're an expert doesn't mean showing someone your brochure or telling them about a special deal that you've got going on on data backup services. What can make you look like an expert? So next time you're at that networking meeting and you're talking to people, you know, those meetings that we talked about, maybe the law association or accounting or, or chamber of commerce meeting, when you talk to people and you get interested in what they're saying, instead of just saying, hey, yeah, uh, let's set up a time where we can talk, because they might not be quite ready for that. What if you said this? What if you said, hey, we've got a really good article on the most overlooked files that accountants should be backing up. Would you like me to send that to you? Then you collect their business card. You make a note on it, on the back or on the front, send article, and they see you doing that put that in your pocket, and then you follow up that evening and you send that article to them. Then you make a note in your CRM tool to follow up in a week to see if they found that article useful. That's important. Is, it, is it important that they actually read that article? Not really, because what you're doing is you're providing a multiple touch point to start the conversation. Marketing is all about starting conversations. Sales is about closing the deal. But marketing is about getting people interested. So do this next time you're at a networking event. This is one of the most valuable pieces of information I can give to you. Don't just show up at an event, hand out your business cards, try to close meetings or get things set up. Just offer education, offer information. We've got a really good article on the most overlooked files that accounts should be backing up. Would you like me to send that to you? Real easy and people will probably respond to it. So here's actually a, here's a list of quite a few different things that you can share with people. It's not just the, the one example I provided a moment ago. So 
The seven most important files you should back up nightly. Five things to consider when, when planning your data backup process. How to build a disaster recovery plan. How to remove paperwork clutter and store documents in the cloud. How to create a cloud policy for your small business. Or six steps to prepare your business for natural disasters. All of these and many more are part of our library in Prestacular, and Intronus also has uh, several pieces in their uh, marketing kit for, uh, for their partners too. So imagine how much farther your marketing could go with access to this arsenal of material. It's not just a brochure, it's not a business card, but real education that communicates in the same words, remember we talked about words, the same words that your audience understands. This is a huge arsenal of information you can use to help close more deals. There's even more that you can actually do with these articles. Uh, let me hone in on uh, one of the last things that a business can do to prepare for a storm. Uh, and this was, if you happen to be on the uh, east coast, northeast coast of the United States, uh, just last week, hit with a major snowstorm. Jeff, I think you guys must have gotten pummeled. You're in the uh, New England area. Uh, probably got a lot of snow last week, right? Well, it depends. If you if you call 35 inches over two or three days pummeled, then yeah, I would get yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> then you did get a few, right? I remember digging so out of, out of some, of, some of those types of storms in the D.C. area. And so, um, so savvy marketers, what they could do right before the snowstorm comes, because snowstorms don't just happen, you know. The weather people predict them, and they say, hey, in two days, you know, start to, start to get your uh, stuff ready. This is a technique called newsjacking. It's a term coined by uh, international best-selling author David Meerman Scott. The, the basic concept is that uh, you connect a news event with something that's related to your business. So the article uh, on, that you might have on, on planning for a major storm is something that a non-technology business is going to understand very well. It doesn't say, hey, I've got a great price on data backup. Instead, it hones in on a potential pain point very quickly. So last week, when we got hit with that snowstorm, what usually happens when we hear a weather report about a major storm? Now, this could be a hurricane coming up in the summer. It could be anything. But a major storm, people go out, they buy bread, they buy milk, they buy eggs, they take care of their house. And they often forget about the impact a storm could have on their business. So uh, if you sent out something like this, where you, you sent a note to all of your contacts. It can be an article or an infographic like this. This is actually a part of an infographic that we provide to our clients uh, as part of our service. Uh, it'll help them understand what they should be doing, backing critical data up off-site, uh, keeping a list of important contacts. There's a whole list of things that they can, they can have. And by sharing this information, what are you doing? You're watching out for that business at a time that they need to know. Pretty useful in building trust, right? Very handy to send this out in a timely fashion. You can do the same thing when we come up on uh, storm season come the summertime. So listen to your weather reports and send out an alert like this. Uh, it could be just a tip sheet or a, or a full infographic. So let's turn over here uh, and pivot the conversation to the online world. And then I'm going to tie it all together so you can create this unstoppable marketing process to generate qualified leads. So when you go to Google, there's a, a, a tool called um, uh, Google Trends, and it'll help you see what kind of uh, uh, words are trending. You can also see uh, the number of searches or the volume of searches done over time. It might not always give you the number, but you can see the number of searches or the volume of searches relative to other terms. So the term PC data backup, a lot of search is being done for it. Let's add another term and compare that as an overlay, computer data backup. So probably about the same number of searches being done on those terms. So if you're found on Google for those terms, pretty good. You can go find, get, 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 uh, get some search traffic that way. Well, let's change the term a little bit to computer backup. Well, you can see that just the term computer backup is searched on way more than PC data backup and computer data backup. So as you start to think about content for your site uh, and, and search engine optimization, you can start to see which words might have a broader impact. Now, granted, uh, the more popular word, sometimes the harder it is to actually get found on. And we'll talk about that in ju just a minute here. Uh, add the term data backup, and you see even more searches being done. And if you take a look at the term server backup, look at that. Huge number of searches compared to all of the other ones. The thing is, the, the, the cumulative effect of these terms is a lot of potential surf services, uh, searches that your uh, service 
fits. So to get found on these, you need a lot of content around the topic. You don't want to have just a page that says data backup and just talk about all these things. If you had different pages for all these different topics, Google will start to see you as a much more reliable source. You'll be able to find you on these different search terms. So you can level, leverage these uh, terms and many, many more. So we're going to just focus on one term for now, uh, though you shouldn't discard the other ones, okay? So let's do a search on cloud backup. What I did here was I took a screenshot of the top terms that show up when you search on the terms cloud backup. If you look at them, most of them, uh, they're kind of just tips and information. I mean, there's Carbonite up there that's selling to con consumers, but, but uh, there's something about Google Play, one of the Google uh, Cloud backup apps. And then here's one, 36 online backup services reviewed, five best online backup services from Lifehacker. So it's, they're more trending topics, they're news, they're, 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 there are some products, but uh, often review sites. Now I'm going to tweak this search term just a little bit. And so, by the way, if you tried to get found on cloud backup for your company, it would be very challenging because there's so much competition for it. Let's tweak it. Let's add a city. Now, I work in Rockville, Maryland, just north of Washington, D.C. We're a suburb of D.C. And so, if someone typed in the term cloud backup Rockville, a completely different list and even types of companies come up. It actually comes up with companies. Just so happens that th this is the top five searches in my local area here. Uh, two of these, by the way, are our clients. So I know that the material we've got uh, it really helps out quite a bit. And actually, one of them is a, a th third one here is actually a good, good, good friend of mine. So it really changes the game once you add a city term to your uh, your pages. So. On your website, if you've got content that talks about data backup, the simple act of adding your city, your geographical region, your postal code, things like that to help localize the search will help you get found much faster on this type of search. Because Google looks at it and says, all right, someone's looking for cloud backup. They might be looking for all kinds of things. I mean, they might be looking for uh, ways to back up their iPhone, for all you know. But when they type in cloud backup and then a city name, it changes the game because they know, oh, this person must be looking for companies specifically in this area that can help with cloud backup. So, in fact, uh, you know, a, a company on, on, on that page, uh, one of Google, like I mentioned, like two, two of the companies are our clients, top five, by the way. So they've got quite a bit of content on these and other IT support topics, not just, IT, not just data backup services, because chances are you're an, uh, an IT services company and you provide more uh, material to more services to your clients. Again, one article or a single web page on data backup isn't going to cut it. The more material you have, the better indexed your site will be. And then it becomes really easy to do things like getting a newsletter out. And this is important. Here's why. When a client only sees promotion after promotion, they tune out. So here's an example of a newsletter from one of our clients. In fact, they were listed as a uh, 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 I think the number two uh, search on the first page of Google uh, that I just showed you a couple moments ago. When, when people see educational pieces instead of promotions, they tune in. So again, promotion after promotion, they tune out. When they start to see educational pieces, they stay tuned in. When they're tuned in, you started to build that trust. What comes with trust? What's well, a bonus? If they trust you, they become open to your advertising, open to your sales pitches, and open to your promotions. So the trust has to come first before you start pitching them. According to the Direct Marketing Association, email has the highest return on investment of any form of direct response marketing. Any form. Print mail, anything. I think their latest numbers actually show that you get an average of a $40 return on every dollar you spend on, uh, on, uh, on email marketing. So to get the most mileage out of your content, you can create that newsletter, send it yourself, or you can use a tool to help you out. So this is an example of a newsletter that was created using our tool. It literally takes about, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds to a minute, maybe 90 seconds to actually create this uh, and, and send it out. The really neat thing about our tool is that all of the content is already included. You don't have to write anything. It already has all of the educational material put in place. So there's another thing you can do to try to attract more people and get, uh, uh, get those visitors to your website converted into leads. 
most of you may have a contact form on your website. Well, there's a way to get people to fill out that contact form rather than just kind of hope that they really enjoyed the experience with your website and, and want to fill out that form. So if you want someone to fill it out, don't just post up that generic form with a little submit button. Give people a reason to fill it out, an incentive. So many of our clients use our specialized white papers to capture contact information from your website visitors. This is what we call uh, gated content. You might have heard that term before. It's where you put valuable content uh, behind a uh, sign-up form so that way people exchange their email address in return they get your valuable content. So in fact, uh, our tool Prestacular actually has a way to capture all this information automatically and then si send the white paper to them uh, right after they enter a valid address. So it even verifies that they have a valid address. Uh, and then it alerts you so that you can follow up accordingly. So Prestacular clients also get a set of documents we call the Data Backup Marketing Kit. It contains a lot of information, uh, things like uh, an 11 page white paper and word format so that you can drop in your logo, even a client testimonials or a quick two liner about a project that you did. So you can offer that as an incentive for someone to fill out your form. Uh, our marketing kit for data backup also contains a PowerPoint presentation that you can use as a sales deck uh, or as a live seminar for your local association. So you remember that exercise we did earlier about identifying where your prospects hang out. Well, this is where that kind of information comes in really handy because you can go to that association and say, hey, I've got a really neat presentation to help save a lot of people headaches. And you can use the, that, that PowerPoint deck that we provide. So our kit also has seven pre-formatted articles uh, that you can print out and mail or just send by email. And these are really handy in keeping in touch with, with prospects who've gone cold. Now, all of us have been in a situation where you send in a proposal and then you never hear back. Ever, ever been in that situation? No response to your voicemails, no response to your emails, just radio silence. So when that happens, what do we all normally do? We send an email that says, hey, just checking to see if you had any questions on our proposal, right? Well, if they had a question, they would have contacted you. So what if you changed the way you approached your follow-up? Instead of that usual just checking in message that you send, what if you said, hey, Bob, I thought you might be interested in this article on the six most important files you should back up nightly. Shall we pick up our dialogue on getting your IT taken care of for you? Do you see how this is a much more effective approach? Now, people might not respond to just that one follow-up. That's why in our kit we actually created seven additional touch points beyond just the white paper uh, and, and the data backup marketing kit. It gives you numerous opportunities to engage in prospects, uh, engage them into a meaningful dialogue. So instead of every time you send them a little note that says just checking in, you send them a new article and you say, hey, thought you might be interested in this. You're building that brain trust because you're probably the only one sending them more material to educate them so that they can make an informed decision about their IT. So regarding that data backup marketing kit I mentioned, if you're not one of our customers, you can actually build your own. You can write a detailed white paper, uh, make a PowerPoint presentation to position you even stronger as an expert. You can also print out copies of that white paper. You can use that as an incentive to get people who attend your presentation to show up. So if you're going to give a, a, a seminar at a local chamber of commerce about data backup, you can say attendees will get a copy of and then the name of the white paper that you have. So remember, you know, when we talked about where your clients hang, hang out, instead of just attending that network, networking event, you contact that, the, the chapter president of your local chamber of commerce or, or the accountants association or that medical society. They are always looking for good speakers at events. So give that seminar an offer to share your white paper. In this way, when you're up in front of those people, at the end you can say uh, to them, hey, uh, if you enjoyed the presentation, I've got a white paper that you might find useful, just give me your business card. So again, you've created this, this process of engaging them in multiple touch points just by saying that because you're going to collect their business card, that's another touch point. You're going to follow up with that white paper that we talked about or some other article or something like that. Everybody who gives you your business card at such an event, by the way, if you're the speaker, they are all qualified business leads for your data backup services. And then add these contacts to your email list and to your CRM tool so that you can nurture them in the future and create multiple touch points. There's an old marketing axiom that says, 
it takes up to seven touch points for someone to actually be uh, to remember who you are. So, um, so, so create those multiple touch points. So rounded out, uh, rounding out our puzzle here, the last piece on how to get prospects to buy from you is by building trust and staying top of mind. Think about all those business cards that you've collected over time. They might be sitting in your desk somewhere just collecting dust. So start touching your contacts in this non-intrusive way every month. Email is the most least expensive way to build trust and stay top of mind so that you can sell peace of mind which is your data backup services. Now, if all you do, if you, well, I should say, if, if you do all of the things that I talked about in today's webinar, you are going to have an, a, an unstoppable marketing campaign that will get you qualified leads. You just need to make sure you follow up with the people that uh, contact you. So to make your life easier, instead of spending your valuable time writing, you might consider licensing the content. It's pretty affordable, and uh, it's designed for small companies that don't have marketing departments. So this becomes your marketing department without the high cost of hiring and managing people. When you think about the time and effort that it would take you to draft articles, let alone a white paper or a PowerPoint, I mean, you think of what that time translates into in terms of your own productivity or your hourly rate. It's actually cheaper to use a tool like uh, Prestacular uh, that has all of this content built in. You just pick the articles you want to use, make some edits if you want, and boom, you're done literally in just minutes. In fact, we're, we're releasing an auto-publishing feature very soon uh, that uh, is going to create your newsletter for you automatically. Uh, you just set it on, and then every month uh, it'll generate everything for you on the fly and then do all the tracking and reporting and so on. It's kind of like having a marketing assistant on your team, but a very teeny, teeny, tiny fraction of, of actually hiring somebody. Very ideal for small companies. Uh, for those of you who may be interested and you have the time to, to read, uh, uh, this book I mentioned, The IT Marketing Crash Course, it's, it's available on Amazon. It's been a number one bestseller uh, quite a few times in multiple categories. Uh, the Kindle version of it is still only three U.S. dollars, which is less than a price of a coffee at Starbucks. Uh, it'll give you a lot of insight into how to position your company and help it grow. Uh, and if you'd like more information on the, the tool I mentioned called Prestacular, it's a marketing tool that contains pre-written IT articles so that you can click and use it and edit it, and, and, and then our data backup marketing kit gets included with that. There's a lot of one-pagers that you can print out to use to drip market to your, your prospects uh, to revive cold leads as well. Uh, and so there's a button here on Prestacular.com that you can request a demo from, uh, and we also have an infographic and multiple other uh, things. So just wanted to mention that and, and to just close out uh, to remind everybody, thank you for attending. We, we are going to be giving uh, out this uh, data backup marketing plan template by email. Uh, so uh, we, if you registered for the webinar, uh, we've got your email address. We will be sending that out shortly. And Jeff, I think we have some, some time for questions. So why don't we open uh, the floor up to questions now? Sure, Raj. Let's do that. Um, Thanks for a great presentation. I think uh, I certainly learned a lot today, and I hope that folks on the call have. And uh, let's, let's continue those great learnings with the Q&A session. Um, folks that have questions on their mind about anything that Raj has discussed today, uh, please feel free to put those questions into the questions panel on your GoToWebinar screen. Uh, the interface on the right side, you should see where to put those. And we'll answer as many as we possibly can. Those that we don't get to, we'll do our best to answer one-on-one -on -one after the session. Uh, before we dive right in, I'd just like to remind folks on the call that three organizations uh, represented on the screen here now have partnered to bring you today's webinar. And you can learn more about our solutions and our services using the contact info on your screen. Uh, obviously, Intronus, Prestacular, and Autotask. Um, you know, and and uh, if you have any questions for us about our, our products or service offerings, please feel free to contact us directly. Uh, now, in terms of questions for Raj about today's content, uh, our first question comes from Connor, and Connor asks, you mentioned sending email newsletters. How frequently should I send these out? Uh, good question, Connor. So uh, the recommended dosage of email, if, if I could put it that way, is about once a month. So anything that's less frequent than that is not enough touches. So uh, if you send something once a quarter, even less than that, so I know some people that try to send something out like maybe two times a year, uh, that just isn't enough uh, for touch points and people will forget about you. Uh, if you send it too frequently, like every few days, every week, something like that, uh, it might be too much. People might get tired of hearing from you. So we find that sending a monthly piece 
uh, is is a really good pace um, uh, that conditions people to getting your, your messages, and it's something that's actually doable for you too. It's it's not a, an overwhelming amount of work to get that out. Um, you know, if you use a tool like ours, uh, like Prestacular, you can just kind of set that. And, and it will automatically do a lot of those touch points for you uh, and then give you metrics to show you who's actually engaged, who's reading it, who's, who's clicking on the different articles on the different topics so you can actually know where your lowest hanging fruit uh, is. So yeah, once a month is probably a good pace. Okay, uh, thanks Raj. Uh, we've got another question here. This one comes from Raymond. Uh, he mentions for the marketing campaigns you've talked about, are there smaller versions of the campaigns instead of several months? Is there a version where it's a month long? Um, and I'll just add that I, as a as a marketer, I hear that a lot from various constituents that you know it's uh, great to market quickly and get returns quickly. But I know from my experience that sometimes things do just take time. But, uh, Raj, go ahead on that one. Yeah, so there's two types of marketing uh, campaign approaches you can take. So one is a very structured campaign that you want to say, all right, we're going to we, we're going to set aside this amount of budget. We're going to do the following activities, and this campaign is going to run over the course of three months, and we want to see what the results are from this. Those are usually done when you have like that fixed budget, and and it's like done almost like an ad campaign. The thing is that should never stop. So it goes to the second type of campaign, which is an ongoing effort where you're you're regularly touching people. Um, you know, uh, here's an example. Like, you know, all of us have heard of McDonald's. Why have we all heard of McDonald's? Is because they advertise like crazy. I'm not talking about why you know they're on the news because their CEO just got fired or something like that. I mean, just they advertise a lot. They're constantly doing promotions, um, and so uh, so. so in the same way for you to stay on top of your clients minds all the time because honestly when you go meet with somebody meet with a prospect they might not be sales ready right away it might take them time to nurture in the whole thought process in their minds as to, to why they might actually need um, a, a data backup services so you know I'm reminded of, of situations where, where I go talk to a prospect uh, uh, and uh, you know as an engineer you explain the th different things to them and you want to close the sale quickly but if they're just not there yet you know what do you do you typically like all right well I'm gonna go find my other low-hanging fruit and try to close them and you forget about the one prospect well if you came back to them and six months later they had said oh yeah we just signed up with some other company you're gonna feel pretty bad because you could have gotten that business had you just stayed on top of it. And so doing a newsletter regularly, sending these other touch points regularly, really makes all the difference. It should just be an ongoing campaign. Thank you, Raj. Um, switching gears briefly to Intronis, I've got a question from Stephen. Uh, he says, all of our clients have a fantastic enterprise backup solution based on tapes, which they take off site. They want to go to the cloud for convenience of not having to flip tapes, but they want seven-year retention. Can you address that? A few of our clients have at least 20 PCs and most are over 50. So um, the simple answer from the insurance perspective is yes, we can provide seven-year retention on cloud backup. Um, we have a lot of flexibility in, in retention and archiving of files. So uh, I don't want to dive too deep to the technical side of things, but Stephen and folks who are interested in that sort of a question should feel free to follow up directly with us using the information on your screen. Um, Intronis, obviously sales at Intronis and the phone number. Uh, or go ahead and, and visit our website and you can request a quote and we'll be happy to entertain all those kinds of questions through that conversation. Um, and I don't want to make this all about Intronis, although it is nice when folks are interested in our products and services. Uh, let's go back to a question that is probably best suited for Raj. Um, Christine wants to know, how customizable is the newsletter layout and content? Can oh, we add well, our own? Wait. Just, uh, I was getting ahead of you. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> can we add our own content in addition to the canned content? And then, of course, what's the solution cost? So obviously, she's talking about Prestacular. Um, yeah, well, th thanks for the question. So, yeah, it's it's quite customizable. In fact, there's a little button that says you know, add your own content, and you can just copy and paste your own content in there as well. So there's a lot of uh, different uh, feature sets in there. Um, we've got a couple of different versions depending on what you're looking for, and so the, the conversation is probably best left to a, a, an actual demo of the tool. Uh, if you go to prestacular.com uh, and then just click on request demo, we can set up a time where we can have a, a conversation to, to match your exact needs. Uh, in terms of cost, 
most. Uh, it's, it, it ranges. It's it's uh, anything from a couple to a few hundred dollars a month. So it, 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 there's a lot of flexibility depending on exactly what you need. Um, and so uh, so that's kind of the range. Uh, but when you think about how much it would cost you to actually write all this yourself, or even bring in a marketing assistant to do all that stuff for you. That's usually thousands of dollars a month. So uh, typically we come in at a very teeny tiny fraction, like maybe a tenth or a fifteenth of the cost of actually hiring somebody uh, to do all this work themselves. Sometimes like even less than that. So uh, so it's a very nice, clean, automated solution uh, that will enable you to have marketing available like clockwork. Uh, so if you don't have that right now, this is a. I know if I when, when I was st I have built and sold three companies. I know when I was starting out, if I had a tool like this, I would have loved it. And that's actually why we built this tool because I remember the pain we were in just trying to do our marketing, and uh, so that hopefully answers your question. Thanks, Raj. Um, we've got a question here from Ramiro, who asks, "What about traditional business that believes their data is still secure in their physical servers?" because the cloud figure leaves a feeling of my critical information is not in my house. How to win this kind of client. Uh, Ramiro, Raj, I'll take that one if you don't mind because yeah, um, yeah. Ramiro, I think, it's, I think it's actually best answered with a webinar we recently conducted with um, My Digital Shield. So uh, if you cannot find that webinar for any reason, you can follow up directly with, uh, with me, uh, jdale at entronis.com. You've seen my emails uh, about this webinar. And um, that webinar was really all about five, it was called Five Tips on Approaching Customers about Cloud Security. So we really dove into uh, how to have that conversation with, with prospects who might be a little bit uh, concerned about putting their data in the cloud. So, so I would suggest taking a look at that webinar. Um, Raj, I don't know if you have any other thoughts on sort of the, the no, I think, cloud. Yeah, I think you're, you're probably the best one to answer that since, uh, yeah, your solution addresses that. Okay, great. Um, Moving on, because I want to get to as many as, of these as we possibly can. Um, boy, I, I'm not setting this up just to get people on my webinars, but uh, Des asks, this may sound ignorant, LOL. Sorry, but when you do cold calling for backup, IT in general, um, what do you typically say when you walk in? We're conducting a webinar uh, that's going to focus on cold calling uh, February 19th. So that's not quite on our website at this point, but it will be soon, Des. Um, I will take your name and I'll make sure that I get a link to you uh, for that webinar in particular, but uh, Raj, you probably also have some thoughts on uh, how to go about cold calling. Yeah, in fact, I think, um, uh, Jeff, I think you and I may have done uh, done a webinar similar to that uh, uh, last fall uh, on how to start a sales call and keep it going. And so we have some material for you that is available completely for free. If you go to prestacular.com, on the top menu bar, click on Resources. And the, then you'll see a link to guides. The second guide that you'll see is uh, is a whole question set on what you can ask during a sales call, uh, before a sales call, when you happen to meet a client, uh, and in different situations. So it's actually a, almost like a cheat sheet of questions that you can use to engage uh, prospects in a dialogue. So prestacular.com, click on resources, guides, and it's the second guide down. Great. Thanks, Raj. Um, another question here as a follow-up from Des is, uh, here's my other question. Should I send newsletters to current clients and prospects? And uh, that's an interesting question, Raj. Maybe you want to take a minute to talk about sort of the value of pushing your newsletters out to, to clients as well as prospects. Oh, yeah. I would strongly recommend you send it to both. Uh, one, um, the reason to send it to clients is that you're staying on top, you know, top of mind with your clients. And, I, and I've talked to a lot of IT firms, and they're like, well, we're on top of our clients anyway. You know, our help desk folks talk to them all the time. That's not what I mean, uh, because you not, might not be talking to the decision maker every time, right? So you want to keep sending something to your clients. And you definitely want to send it to your prospects. Here's an example. We had a, a client who uh, was sending out some information on some, uh, some, some security. I think it was on back, remember, when Crypto Wall and Crypto Locker were coming out? Uh, and so, so he sent a, little, a, a security alert notice to all of his contacts. And, and by the way, uh, it's, it's fairly easy to build your list of contacts, too. Uh, I've got some information on our blog uh, on how to do that. You can even use LinkedIn to help build your email list, too. Uh, but he sent a note out about this. To, to some of his contacts. A lot of people were already using another IT firm. 
But when they got his note about the security alert, they started scratching their heads thinking, well, why is an RIT firm telling us about this? This seems pretty important. So they ended up contacting our client, and within one week, he was able to close $5,000 in project business, and then within a month of that, he was able to convert those project clients into recurring revenue, $75,000 a year in recurring revenue just from educating them. And these are prospects, again, right? They weren't actual clients. So when you think about what that means in terms of customer lifetime value, if these people stayed with him for, I don't know, five years, might be an average length, lifespan of a client, uh, that's almost half a million dollars in, in customer lifetime value of business that he just got by educating people. So send it to, to, to prospects and to clients. Thanks, Raj. Um, you know, at this point, I don't want to take another question because I'm afraid we'll run beyond the hour and I want to be respectful of, of everyone's time. But I, I do appreciate the tons of questions that are coming in. Um, by the second here, so we will do our best to answer those one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Raj, obviously I'll get those over to you so that you can address those that are appropriate for your, your services and your expertise. Um, thank you very, very much for your, your presentation today. Uh, I think that, that we all learned a lot and I, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us and for their active participation in the polls and in the, the questions. Uh, any closing comments, Raj? No, thank you very much, Jeff. I really appreciated the opportunity to talk to everybody. Hope you picked up at least a tip or two. I always like to put in my mind uh, every event I want to go to, I'd like to at least get one nugget out of it, even though some of it may be refresher, and that's good because that kind of gives you a little boost to get some stuff done. So just remember, we're at the beginning of 2015. It is only the first part of February. We have the entire year left, so you can really hammer home some, some big business. So uh, looking forward to connecting with you. Look for that uh, marketing plan template to help you structure your, your program for the remainder of 2015. Great. Thanks, Raj. And uh, as a reminder, that marketing plan Raj mentioned and the recording of today's session will be delivered to your inbox in the next couple of days. Uh, there will be an email from Intronis, and uh, please look for that. Uh, again, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Raj. And uh, make it a great day. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.